Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy beginning of a brand new week. How's everybody doing today? Hi, this is Jan from New York City. And if it's Sunday, that means it's chat time. And you know, I was doing a lot of thinking the other day about getting out of the victim mentality. How many people, I wonder, out there constantly believe that they are the victim? Now, don't get me wrong. There are times in life when one is truly victimized, and I mean truly victimized. But I would say that possibly, more often than not, there are a lot of people who get themselves in a bind and then proclaim themselves as victims. We're going to talk about that for a couple of minutes, and then I'm going to give you a canned salad recipe at the end of this video. Canned salad? What? Yes, salad from a can. And I'll be right back. Hey, thanks so much for sticking around. And we're talking today about being a victim or the actuality is, are you really a victim? And let's stop it with the woe is me attitude. What do I mean by all of that? Well, I'll give you an example after a sip. By the way, you're drinking your tea or your coffee this morning? How you doing? Oh, nothing like that first cup of the day. But in all honesty, this is like the middle of my second cup. <laughs> Okay, talking today about the victim mentality. We need to get out of it. The reason we need to get out of it is one, it's a falsehood. Two, it holds you back. And three, sometimes, unfortunately, some people use being a victim as an excuse to get out of things. But as said earlier, there are times in life when being an actual victim of serious stuff is true and very warranted. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the garden variety proclamation of, oh, I am a victim. Now look, if a person is overweight, e.g., let's say myself, and I know that something is not the healthiest choice for me, and I know that it could cause me to gain weight, but yet I go for it anyway in excess and call it a treat when it's just a bad actual habit, and then if I get on the scale and go, oh, I gained two pounds. That's on me. I'm not the victim. We live in a world of choices. When you choose your action, you choose your consequence, okay? Whether it's a good action or a bad action. And in that case, that was a bad action, okay? Now, there are people who abuse their credit cards. They have no intention of paying it back. Then the bill comes in and they're like, yikes, the collection agency's coming after me. Woe is me. Poor me. No, no, no. Poor is not you. You made the decision, that person made the decision willfully that they had probably no intention of paying it back. If you have no income and you're paying uh, and you're utilizing a credit card, please tell me how do you intend to pay it back? Because in the back of that person's mind, they know they're not going to. It's just like a delay tactic. So if a person's going to choose this type of action, don't go around saying, oh, poor me. I got the collectors after me. <laughs> the lights are out. <laughs> and I can't go out and eat breakfast outside because I actually have to crack an egg open and make it myself. And actually even make your own coffee at home. Woe is me, poor me. I'm sorry, I don't know about you, but my empathy runs out of gas in situations like that. It just, I just don't have the empathy. We live in that world of choices. But conversely, if you choose a positive action, okay, for example, uh, even down at a grassroots level, uh, there's a really cute video that I put out yesterday, if you've not seen it. And it's all about uh, motivation for saving a little bit at a time and seeing big results. Some people laugh at the dollar a day challenge. And I laughed all the way to the bank with 685 uh, smackaroos in three months. In three months time, that is not bad for effortless saving. I chose an action. I got the reward. Action, consequence. No woe is me. Um... Okay, the holiday season is, here it is upon us. Some people are going to wear out the plastic to ad nauseum, knowing fully well that at some point, 
the bill's going to come in. But guess what? They're too excited. And I understand that this happens to all of us. The music, the lights, the, the colors, everything that hits our sensations, <clears throat> excuse me, will happen to us in the next few weeks. And we do get caught up or we're embarrassed because someone gave us a gift and, oh my goodness, I have to give one back and all this like ridiculousness. If a person at this moment doesn't sit down and write out a budget, it's kind of like, let's do it now, do it or die, because it is November already. Plan your holiday budget, okay? Be realistic about what you can spend and cut it off where you cannot. If it's just too much, too much to participate in all those office festivities, kindly decline. If you really don't want to go to five holiday parties, kindly decline. You have to be the big person here and draw the boundary line and don't do it like really not wanting to. And then you go home and you sit down with a cup of tea and go, what I do that for? What I do that for? And then you act like you're the victim. Oh, woe is me. No, you're not. You made a silly decision. Or going overboard with the plastic wear. And then comes January. January comes. I don't care what anybody says. January will come. Just saying. Just saying. So, you're probably wondering where I'm going with this chat. What I'm doing is this. A lot of times we don't have to be the victim. We set ourselves up. We set ourselves up. So maybe let's try something new this time. Let's not set ourselves up for disaster. Let us not proclaim ourselves as victims when the truth and the fact is we always have the right to be the victor. And that's my message for this week. When I come back, if you're still interested in hanging out with me, I'm going to tell you about canned salad. And a reminder, I will be back this afternoon because it's still slow cooker Sunday. So get your pens ready this afternoon. But for now, you might want to get your pen ready for a canned salad. You may not even need the pen. It's so short and simple, it's almost a joke. Be right back. Okay, so thanks for sticking around. Take another sluggy sluggy. Wow, that's good. And I hope that your Sunday is going well. I hope that your weekend is very nice. And if you're not feeling so great, obviously, I want you to feel better real soon. And hang on to that positive thought. Okay. Uh, probably a lot of you are sleeping extra because we did gain an hour here. Not me, though. I still wake up early no matter what. I just do. Oh, well. Anyway, getting back to this uh, canned recipe. Canned salad recipe. Canned salad recipe. All you need is a can. This is my favorite. It begins with letter G, ends with letter A, and that company rhymes with oi, uh, rhymes with oya. <laughs> this is not a sponsored ad, but that company's garbanzo beans, or in other words, chickpeas, I could literally break open a can of that and pop them in my mouth like I'm eating candy. I kid you not. But this is for my favorite my favorite side dish, Jan's chickpea salad, okay? So you get a can of those garbanzo beans or chickpeas. You drain it. You eyeball it with a mixture of that other salad dressing in a bottle that you can make a wish with. <laughs> or your salad dressing of choice. I prefer the Italian one, Italian salad dressing uh, thrown on the garbanzo beans. Chop into it a little bit of fresh onion, not a ton, just, just a little hint of flavor, and a pinch of pepper. It's so flavorful, you don't even need a pinch of salt, but if you wish to add a pinch of salt, then that's up to you. You let that marinate in the morning, put it in, you know, one of your storage containers, and when you come home from a tiring day, you don't have to cook a side dish, you whip that thing out. You could eat it as it is. You could throw it in other things. You'd get creative. Some people maybe want to make a cold pasta salad and include that with it. Okay, and it's actually one meal. Some people may want to put this on, um, let's say, a jarred can of red peppers. You know, the jarred one already done up. Could do that. Lots and lots of choices. How simple, how inexpensive, and how delicious was that? I can tell you factually very. Now, if there's anyone out there 
that would add another item to my salad, let me know what it would be. Would it be olives? Would it be artichoke hearts? Something you don't have to cook, done up already. I like canned things that you could throw together. And there's nothing wrong with canned foods. Oh, one more thing. The shelf life, I noticed, on a can of those garbanzo beans was shocking. It was something like four years. I checked the uh, best buy date on the can the other day when I had some. And it said 2024. It knocked my socks off. <laughs> so you're getting your money's worth. Okay. And in the meantime, this has been Jan from New York City, and my channel name is Jan from New York City Saves Money. But on Sunday morning, I like to give a special talk, okay? Hope that everyone's doing well. And hey, for those interested, please come back for my Slow Cooker Sundays, which usually gets uploaded somewhere between 2 and 4 p.m. New York time. Have a great morning. I'll see you again real soon. Have a great day.